Where time doesn't matter. We're your host. I'm Gilead Festus Ezekiel. And I'm Antiochus for Epiphanies. It's Friday, folks. You know what that means. It's time for this week's review. Gil? As we know this week, Plato, Socrates' most famous pupil and philosopher, came out with his outlandish myth of the cave, designed to illustrate humanity's search for knowledge. <laughs> he may have himself digging himself out of a cave this time. <laughs> In other news, Felicity Perpetua and St. Ignatius of Antioch were all martyred in the amphitheater this last week. Uh, Ignatius was thrown in with a bunch of lions and eaten and mauled to his death, whereas Felicity and Perpetua were both beheaded. Very tragic, but very inspirational. Yes, indeed. This week, St. Benedict came out with his happily named Rule of St. Benedict, a very strict order written for his monks on the way for them to live their life. We had a chance to talk to one of these monks about it. Now to our infield reporter. What did you think? I actually have to work now. It is hard. I'm miserable. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> well, that does sound like a really hard rule to live by. Indeed, I, I definitely cannot live by that. <laughs> oh, what? This just did, folks. St. Augustine has converted. After ten years of struggling, St. Augustine is on our side. All right, yes. I guess we can owe it all to his mother, St. Monica. What a lovely lady. His, his writings inspire me. They are a story of a struggle to achieve the greater good in a world of sin and filth. How about you? I really, really think that if we had to trade everything that St. Augustine has written versus every other piece of literature in the world, the rest of the literature would have to go. Indeed. Speaking of Augustine, I heard that Thomas Aquinas has officially surpassed him in the area of theology, giving to us the concise summary of the teaching of the Catholic Church, entitled the Summa. Really? Yes. Impressive. Indeed. It is a very good summary of everything you need to get the basic gist of. That is impressive. I wish there were more people like Aquinas around now today. I do too. Big story for this week. John the Apostle finished writing his revelations and soon thereafter unfortunately passed away. Oh. The last of the Apostles, John left behind him a legacy that many will carry on forever. The Apostles were of course the twelve that followed Christ when he walked the earth and well, such a swell group of guys really. Twelve incredible inspirations. Indeed. We have with us now a special guest, a Gnostic from the Eastern Empire has come to pay us a visit and share his opinions. This world's bad. <laughs> and Please, well, the spiritual range. one's good, but this, this is bad. As in the material world. I take offense at the term Eastern Empire, if you would not mind not using that. I don't like to be affiliated with anything in this world. I. I wouldn't say everything's bad. I mean, God created the world. I would. But this is straight up heresy, man. Well, maybe you. But, but that's to me, it's, it's, it's truth. That's... <laughs> you Gnostic, these heresies come spewing out your mouth like excrement. I think we need to send you to France to see the Inquisitors. Get, get off this <laughs> shit. We're here with one of Italy's top-selling authors, Dante. So, so Dante, uh... Tell us, I hear you're working on a new series. Yes, it's called The Divine Comedy. Really? Yes. Sounds intriguing. How long has it taken you to write The Divine Comedy? I have no idea because it's not yet written. I'm still working on it. How long have you been working on it so far? A few months. Maybe six. I've lost track of that. I say locked up in my room. It's very, very easy to concentrate. Do you plan on moving on to any other works in this movie? No. I plan on retiring after this one becomes a bestseller. Do you think it will? Nope. No. Fine comedy. The, the it has a nice name, but we'll see what, we'll what see. happens. Well, thanks for joining us, and it was a pleasure having you. It's a pleasure being here. Tragedy has struck the church. The event now being called the Great Schism is the split of the Eastern Empire from the Western Empire. 
After an mutual disagreement for hundreds and hundreds of years, the church just couldn't keep everyone together. Charlemagne was crowned the Holy Roman Emperor last Tuesday. Yes, the 800th year is coming in with the heads of the church doubling as the heads of the state in a theocracy. Should be quite exciting. Let's see what happens. Yes, sounds very exciting. <laughs> Speaking of monasteries, did you hear about the new work program called Or Ad Labora that they're using to try to form one's life towards Christ more fully? You know, I had heard rumors about that. It sounds like a really good idea. I think so, too. Pope Gregory VII is cracking down on the clergy, declaring that all guilty of incontinence cease their sacred ministry and that churches and their church orders are, quote, not for sale. Anymore. Good for him. We need more people out there like him. Very good man. Very great pope. Finally, after 10 years of the Diocletian persecution, the Edict of Milan was signed this week by Empress Constantine and Licinius. It proclaims religious toleration in the Roman Empire. We were lucky enough to have coverage of what was going on at the time of the signing of the Edict. Now to our infield report. The Edict of Milan has been passed. Finally, something has happened to quell the horrible persecutions. I'm so pleased. I'm very, I couldn't be more happy today. This just in. Thomas Beckett has been beheaded in his church by the soldiers of the crown of King Henry. Thomas Beckett was, of course, made famous for his apparent betrayal of the king, but when asked about it, he had this to say. I served... Our Theobald well when I was with him. I served King Henry well as Chancellor. I am his no more, and I must serve the church. Thomas Beckett, of course, was given the authority of Bishop by King Henry, and later had to turn on his old friend for his wicked ways. Man, there are so many cool martyrs out there. I'm just blown away. That's rad. And Islam is on the rise. After Muhammad's death in 632 AD, Muslims have been trying to obtain a greater presence. They have become a large threat as they are trying to take the Holy Land. You know, I have a feeling there's going to be some bloodshed on this one. Definitely. Pope Urban II has declared a crusade against the Islam nation in response to the Muslim oppression of Christians in the city of Jerusalem. And also, along the way, Pope Urban hopes to free the sacked city of Constantinople, who has sent out a cry for help to the Pope. We go now to our infield reporter who is there at the walls of Jerusalem now. It appears that it's one more crusader left within the city of Jerusalem. I'm going to ask for interview. Excuse me, sir. Oh, oh dear. It appears that uh, the crusaders have been victorious. Really well done by the Christian crusaders there. I am so happy. Uh, this made my week. This has been the best week. It, it really has. There's been a lot more positive news than sad news. I really hope the, uh, the win streak continues. Folks, this is just in. Uh, we have breaking news. The Barbarian Terror Alert has been elevated to Barbarian Level Red. Um, we are being attacked by hordes of barbarians at the moment. Um, our infield reporter is on the scene to give us a closer look. I hope he's alright. Excuse me, sir. Why are you ransacking my no! Oh, God. No! Oh, God. No! <laughs> no!